Hello everyone, this is Latasha Blanton from the Real South Africa Travel and Tourism. And you're gonna have the opportunity to travel with Phil Scott to... Sunny South Africa. You guys are gonna have the opportunity to come to Johannesburg and you guys are gonna be coming to Durban. And we're gonna set it up perfectly. It's gonna be like a luxury experience for you guys. At the same time, you're gonna be getting some culture. And of course, you're gonna get an opportunity to talk to Phil, hang out with Phil, and get his views on Africa and South Africa. You're also going to get an opportunity to explore the lifestyles here that are available in South Africa. And we're going to do all that for you in an amazing 10 days. We do hope that you go to the website and book because we do look forward to seeing you here. Absolutely. Our website is therealsouthafrica.com. Go there, scroll down. You'll see a picture of Phil and just go ahead and book there. So we'll see you here in what we like to call sunny, sunny South, South Africa. Africa. The city of Houston now knows who will be the next mayor, and that will be Senator John Whitmire. He bested that of Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee uh, in a runoff. Now, originally they ran against each other in November, but neither one of them crossed the more than 50% mark to become the next mayor. So they have to have a runoff on uh, December 9th, which was a Saturday. It was kind of weird to me. I don't know, but nevertheless, Let's just say that Whitmire, uh, he left Sheila in the dust. He garnered 65% of the vote and Sheila got about 34%. Now, a lot of people were hoping that she would win. You know, there's a lot of black people in Houston and they, you know, just had a black mayor, Sylvester Turner. He served out two terms and even he was endorsing Sheila. Everybody black you can think of was endorsing Sheila, right? But again, that didn't happen. And some people are very glad because it's like, okay, great. Maybe something else good will come out of this new mayor. Now it should be said that John Whitmire is also a Democrat, but if you kind of listen to him and you know, look at some of his policies, he acts more like a conservative, which is not a bad thing, right? Because if you have uh, been to the city of Houston in certain areas, you can see that they could probably use a changing of the guard. Like if you go into the third and the fifth wards, you might tear your car up because there's severe potholes. There's, you know, uh, wild dogs running around. It's just like left behind in a lot of those areas. And you know, those areas <laughs> where we live, right? And so again, Sheila is not gonna be the next mayor if you ask me, hooray, okay. Now, some people are probably wondering, well, well, how did that happen? Well, in my uh, not so professional opinion, I guess, well, maybe I am some sort of a professional. I don't know, I don't wanna sell myself short. I think for, for one, Saturday is kind of a weird day. You know, most people are off that day and it, cause there wasn't a lot of people that showed up for the election, let's keep it honest, right? But on a Saturday, people are like, okay, I've worked all week, I wanna sit home, I wanna go do something fun, right? Some people don't think voting is fun. So the day of the week, I think kind of hurt uh, Sheila Jackson Lee, because you know what our people, we like to have a good time. I'm not saying that we're not interested in voting, but Saturday we like to do other stuff. Okay. The other thing I believe that happened was apathy, right? Especially with black voters, we as black people, what do we do? We go to the voting booth and we vote and we hope for change, right? Obama, hope he change. We hope something's gonna change and it never does, right? So black people, I think, get apathetic, like, uh, oh, everything will be all right. And if it doesn't, who it is not, what do we care, right? Like we never get what we want anyway, so we're just not gonna show up. And the other thing is, y'all might have heard of this term because we've heard it a lot called benign neglect. Now that term came from Daniel Patrick Moynihan. He was an advisor from the Richard Nixon administration in the 70s. And he came up with this thing called the Moynihan Report, right? And you hear a lot of people talk about it, especially when it comes to disparaging black women. It's not what I'm saying, it's just the truth, right? That's what they do because they take little excerpts from the report and say, well, you know, Moynihan is saying this, uh, the black family is having the problems because of single black moms. Yeah, that's kind of what he said. He was making the point and the difference between uh, black single households that are ran you know, by women and then white, right? And then of course he tied in discrimination and racism and a whole host of things that have happened to black people in this uh, place we called America. Okay, so from some of those findings, 
And this was in the New York Times in 1970. And he basically said that what we need to do with the black community is uh, benign neglect, which means we know that we are responsible for dealing with uh, the things that are going on in the black community because we created them, right? Well, we'll just neglect it. We'll ignore it. We'll pretend like it's not a thing. And maybe some of the, what you call the Black Panthers and all of the other uh, black organizations that rose up to try to help ourselves, right? Like the do for self type of thing with Nation of Islam and all that kind of stuff. Those things will go away because we don't need uh, any heroes or anything like that to arise from what we have done to them. So if we just kind of, you know, <laughs> pretend like it doesn't exist, then maybe those things will go away because they were always concerned about the unity of black people, right? They didn't want us to unify. It's been said, one of the biggest threats to this nation is black unity. And so we saw with all the organizations that I remember, I mentioned the Black Panther Party, the Nation of Islam, even way back in Marcus Garvey's time and all the organizations in between. Uh, yeah, the government, they did all they could. COINTELPRO, right? That was created to help uh, quail the insurgence of uh, black unity. And so benign neglect is another reason why I have to believe Sheila Jackson Lee uh, was not elected and black people didn't show up because black people are so used to being neglected. It's like, well, what are we gonna show up for? More of nothing, more promises, more fish fries. What are we showing up for? So that benign neglect, in my opinion, actually hurt Sheila Jackson Lee. So the moral of this story for any Democrat that's running out there, if you actually want black people to show up for you, you might actually need to show up for them. Y'all tell me what you think. And for more insightful commentary, please subscribe to this channel and my channel, The Demetri K Show here on YouTube.